Now, meet Chef Paul Trudholm. He's been one of the most dynamic forces in Southern and American cooking and is the author of the Trudholm Family Cookbook. And I was the last of 13 children, and we didn't have, I mean, when we got a toy for Christmas, it was something carved out of wood, like maybe a wooden train, or uh, we got a whole stock of bananas, and Dad would hang them in the barn, and they would ripen slowly, and that was a holiday thing. We got, you know, stockings on the mantle, and we had real mantle, I mean, we had a fireplace that we used to heat the house with, and we had stockings, and we'd get apples and oranges and get fruit in. So basically, our Christmas is was family and meal. I mean, that was a meal. They would have 30 different dishes and all the family was there. And then as, as when I became about uh, eight or nine years old, mother started a new tradition. And all the family went to the in-laws for Christmas. And then everybody got together for New Year's. So we had our Christmas and New Year's as a family together. And we used to drink any Zet, which is a mother's homemade booze and homemade beer and I had a ball. And what would band. you eat? We, I mean, uh, we had maybe 40, 50 dishes at, at, at New Year's time, and everybody would bring uh, candy yams or their own version of it, a potato salad, or you'd bring enough food for your family, and then they'd lay it out on the table. And we had a tradition, which I think still stands in many Cajun families. Uh, the, the men ate first, and, you know, there was maybe 30, 40 men, and then the kids ate. And then the women sat out and ate because then they had nothing else to do. The men were asleep, <laughs> the kids were asleep, and they could sit and chat and eat. So, uh, and you know, we had uh, we had turkey, and we had uh, three or four kinds of dressing. We had roast pork. We had three or four kinds of beans and desserts. I mean, the Cajuns love sweet things. We had all kinds of desserts and candies. And southern cooking, though, seems to be going on the upswing. I think there are six or seven new books out about southern cooking right now. You what know, do you think? Why? Well, the southern part of every country, the food is better. It has more seasoning in it. It has more taste. It has more, it has more time put into it. Uh, food is more important in the southern part of any country. And in, in the United States, we've always had the best food in the south. And the, the, the dominating food areas have always been New York, San Francisco, and sort of New Orleans mixed in. But I think now that people realize it's not only New Orleans, it's the entire south and all the Gulf Coast that really has wonderful food that's unique and good. Not in the sense of being knock you down unique like Louisiana food is, but the South has, you know, I've said Natalie for years that when people discovered a good biscuit, that it would rival a croissant any day. And it's proven to be true. Oh, I mean, absolutely. A, a good biscuit is better than a croissant. I mean, it has, has its place in culinary arts. That's right. And then there's a technique to it too, I think. People used to act like there was no technique to making something that was Southern. I tell people all the time that if you, if you just took food and you put it ingredients and you put it all together in a pot, turn the fire on, that everybody would be the same quality of cook. But what makes things different and what makes them exciting is the way you put them in the pot and what happens after they're in there. And when, if you're making a biscuit or if you're making this method and this technique to it that is critically important to the end result, you know, for years I tried to make the outside of my biscuit like my mother's. And one day I sat down and said, why was it hers this way? And she would mix her dry mix and then put her milk in it and then mix it on this end. And when a biscuit got to be a round biscuit, she would put it back in the dry mix and, and put that on the outside on this end. She had a long wooden bowl that she made her biscuits in. And after doing that, I realized uh, that was the secret. That what made the outside crust and what made it really different and good. I only have really one thing that looms in my head all the time. And it, actually it's two things, but it's the same thing to me. And one is, I mean, I'm, I'm not a drum beating religious person, but I thank God often. And the other is that I love these people out there. I mean, I would love to take every one of them and show them how to cook so I mean, not that it's important that you know how to cook. It's just when you eat it and, <laughs> and it hits your mouth and it just takes your brain and does wonderful things with it. I mean, if, if kids had really exciting food, Natalie, I think uh. that is their desire to have dope and, you know, I mean, all. I think there's a great pleasure derived in wonderful food. And it's a great amount of satisfaction that happens when you eat well. And... To a family that eats well, I think that 
uh, it goes a long way of them being a family and, and staying together. When you think of Christmas, what dish do you think of most? Well, truthfully, I think of candy yams. I mean, it's the dish we did, you know, that we're going to do today. But it's, it, that's, I think of roast pork and candy yams and potato salad and dirty rice and put it all together, and oh, yum, I mean, it's just good. Paul, I'll butter the potatoes while you make the sauce. All right, we've got a candy yam sauce, and this is one of the easy things in the world to make. We melted some butter, and then the next step is we're going to add some brown sugar, I mean, some white sugar to it, and a little bit of cinnamon to mustn't mix up the colors there. And you ought to be to tell the difference between brown and white, or green and yellow. <laughs> and we're going to put the brown sugar in, and we're turning the fire up, we want to bring it to a boil, and the next step is we're going to add some water to it. Now at this point, I mean this is a really tough recipe. All you need to do is just let her cook, and it's going to get a nice dark color to it. And you got to bring it to a boil to tie it together as a syrup. And when we take the potatoes, and after oh, you butter them, yeah, we'll put them in the oven. Okay? Oh, yeah. You know when I was a kid, I used to take these things and we'd peel them when I got back from school in the afternoon. And mother had some wonderful homemade bread made, and we take the homemade bread with little loaves and you stick your finger in them and you make a hole and you pour syrup in there That's right. and then you take the sweet potato and the syrup and the bread boy it's good eating we did that with biscuits with soil grown in the center oh that's yeah good that's great um what about these different kinds of uh, well, what's a yam and what's a sweet potato well actually they're they're almost the same thing uh, uh i think this is a yam i mean this is the first time i've seen it it tastes like the yams i've seen in the past these two what we call heart of gold sweet potatoes and uh, these are Puerto Rican, so they're, they're uh, full varieties of sweet potatoes there, and they all pretty much taste the same. You can really tell the difference more raw than you can after they're cooked. And I see you're peeling some over there. Once they're baked in the oven, and this recipe calls for that, first you bake them until they fart tender, and then the, the peeling comes off with a, I mean, it's all wrinkled, like, you know, when you get to be old and gray and all that stuff and you get wrinkled, and it just comes right off after, after you, uh, after it gets all wrinkled and you let it cool down a bit. And it's always better to peel sweet potatoes when they're hot. Then after that, you take them and you cut them the way you see Natalie doing there in nice circles and you line them up in a, you line them up in a dish and then uh, you take the, the candy yam sauce and I've got it up to a boil here, Natalie, and we'll just pour it right over the top of that. And well, I bake those uh, potatoes about an hour at 400 to get them that way. I, I think that uh, an hour at 400 and to be su sufficient, I think that uh, uh, with each stove is going to vary a little bit, but I think probably we could say 45 minutes to an hour, because remember, the potatoes are already cooked, your sauce is essentially cooked, and what you want to do is, is uh, marry those things together, just like that. 350 oh. for about half an hour? Boy, that's no yeah, good. It's wonderful, isn't it? It's Ooh. beautiful and bubbly. Give Which a, recipe is this? Give me a big spoon. Yeah. This is my brother, J.C., and his wife, Sis, his recipe. Big enough? And, no. Oh, no, we got to... <laughs> <laughs> I was serious when I said I wanted a big spoon. You said to cool this down, though, before you could eat it. Well, you, it should cool it down a little bit, but, you know, oh, you can... It can burn your tongue. It should taste it. No, no. Okay. you got to learn how to do it. You swallow fast. When you're a real eater, <laughs> you know, you learn how to taste.